Oh, it's another YouTube channel about video games. So like this and subscribe to me and put some shiny quarters in my pocket so I can get more video games. I have a license to use Nintendo's content in this video through the Nintendo Creators Program. This video is not sponsored or endorsed by Nintendo, but any advertising revenue from this video will be shared with Nintendo. Hey everybody, it's uh, Bill W. back with you again. Uh, I'm going to take a break from some of the playthroughs to uh, kind of go off on a rant slash history lesson slash plea to Nintendo to do something. Not that they'll probably actually listen to me. Um, but today I'm going to talk about why the Nintendo Switch needs a new version of Earthbound. For those of you who never played it, Earthbound was released in 1994. It had a re-release in 2016 on the Virtual Console for the 3DS, and it was also re-released on the Super Nintendo Classic in 2017. It was a role-playing game that was pretty dissimilar from a lot of the other role-playing games out there. At the time, you had primarily, you know, fantasy-based ones such as, you know, Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, uh, slash Dragon Warrior, and, you know, some sci-fi ones over on the Genesis such as Fantasy Star. But it took place in modern day. You played as a bunch of kids. You had weapons like frying pans, yo-yos, uh, baseball bats. Instead of, you know, potions and tonics, you had, you know, cheeseburgers. Um, it was just very different. The animation style in it was kind of looked like a hand-drawn acid trip of cartooniness that was just incredibly awesome. It had some great music. It had some, you know, incredibly funny parts in it. Um, worked well for, you know, people of all ages. And, you know, after it was released in 1994... Not much was heard of from the uh, series again. Um, it was actually the sequel to a 1989 Japan-only NES game called Mother, and when it was released in Japan, it was actually called Mother 2 before it came over here. And it was followed up by another Japan-only game for the Game Boy Advance called Mother 3. Um, Mother 3 actually came out of a sequel that was planned for the ill-fated Nintendo 64 Double D disk drive. Um, and this never materialized, even though it was actually about 60% finished uh, before it was scrapped. And the 64 uh, Double D, you know, flopped. And here we can see a comparison of what the Nintendo 64 version looked like versus what the Mother 3 version released on the uh, DS looked like. And here's a... You know, a screenshot from one of the Nintendo 64 magazines just kind of showing how far along everything was on there. You can see a lot of the graphics and everything, and honestly, for the time, it just looked downright amazing. Um, after that flop, they originally were actually thinking of just moving it to the Nintendo 64 regular in a cartridge, but again, that kind of hit the, that hit the 60% and never really made it anywhere. Um, the initial game had kind of a rocky release. It had kind of mixed reviews at the time and lackluster sales. Um, I think a lot of this had to do with the marketing of it and also just because at the time people weren't really sure what to think of it simply because it was so different. Um, however, since then, it's became a game that's been beloved by many and it's seen as one of the best games of its generation along with, you know, a game that's really stood the test of time because, again, of the great gameplay, the great plot the graphics that, you know, actually aged very well because of their cartoony nature. There's like so many games out there that tried to be cutting edge on the gra in the graphics and, you know, went with all the, you know, 3D stuff and, you know, polygons and all that and just did not age well. Kind of looking at you, Final Fantasy VII, your cutscenes are great, but my God, I can only, you know, see those giant square hands of clouds so many times before going crazy. Um, so... In addition to, you know, being beloved, it's also, you know, made appearances in other media. Ness from Earthbound has been a staple of the Smash Brothers game since 1999. And Lucas from the original Mother was included in Super Smash Brothers 4 in 2015. Also, the uh, oh-so-destructive baseball bat from the Smash Brothers series is likely a nod over to Earthbound since baseball bats were one of Ness's primary weapons. Additionally, there's been Amiibos released of Lucas and Ness, and this is allowed for cameos in other games such as Super Mario Maker, where you can actually play as both of them. All right, there's your uh, kind of history lesson and kind of what's been going on with Earthbound. So let's talk about why Nintendo needs to release an Earthbound for the Switch. First up is that Nintendo has not been an RPG powerhouse since the Super Nintendo days. Way back when, Nintendo was really the king of RPGs for consoles, and they had, you know, the Final Fantasy series, the Dragon Quest series. They had, you know, the Nintendo... Uh, Legend of Zelda games, which not true RPGs other than, you know, Legend of Zelda 2, which was actually very RPG-ish. Um, 
They also had, you know, the Breath of Fire series, the Lufia series, Secret of Mana, Secret of Evermore, uh, Nintendo's own Super Mario RPG that was co-developed with Square. Um, you know, it was one of those where if you wanted to play an RPG, you were doing it on a Nintendo system because outside of the Fantasy Star series, the you know Genesis really didn't have much. Um, and then, you know, come the mid-90s, you've got the PlayStation coming out at around the same time as the Nintendo 64, and Squaresoft decided they were going to jump ship over to Sony. Well, once this happened, Nintendo just kind of started withering away and dying in terms of the RPG world. Any of you remember Quest 64? Probably not. It was just not very good. It was kind of convoluted. It really wasn't quite sure what it was doing. I don't even, I couldn't even tell you who the developer on it was. I just remember having played it when it came out and being like, what, what is this? They've had some successes out there. You know, the Paper Mario games are great. You've had Xenoblade, Xenoblade Chronicles. You've had the Zelda series, which, again, not really a true RPG series, but, you know, close enough. Um, you've had some decent ports of games. You've had, you know, remakes. Uh, a lot of good, some pretty decent stuff on the handheld systems. Um, you know, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance was good. You've had the uh, Kingdom Hearts games that were on there. And you've had, you know, a lot of other, you know, smaller RPGs that were good, but number of them that actually appeal to a large audience has just not been very much. Meanwhile, you know, we've had games such as, again, continuing the Final Fantasy series in the, in the PlayStation world. Um, you've had, you know, the Western RPGs such as the Fallouts, the Elder Scrolls series, which I was happy to see that they finally got Skyrim out on the Switch, but that's one of those where, you know, that came out, what, five years ago at this point for the other system, so it's kind of playing a bit of a game of catch-up. And it's one of those where just having something that's, you know, very Nintendo and something that they can fully control and everything, there just hasn't been anything. Um, and while I'm sure there will end up being a new Paper Mario coming out for the Switch at some point, Earthbound, I think, would be a game that would reach the very large audience. I mean, like I said it had you know, great humor in it. It had easy to relate to characters. It had awesome artwork. It had awesome music. The combat system, you know, it was enough to keep you entertained, but it wasn't so in-depth that you had to spend half your day playing out a boss fight, you know, such as, you know, the uh, weapon battles inside of Final Fantasy VII or just some of the, you know, other extreme bosses where you have to grind and grind and grind and grind just to even have a chance of getting through them. You know, this all allows for a game that's easily accessed by players of all ages and potentially has a lot of room for, you know, expansion and replay value in there. Next, we have the whole popularity of nostalgia. You look at, you know, the movies coming out, you've got, you know, the Transformers movies, you had the Ninja Turtle movies, you had the G.I. Joe movies, you've got remake after remake after remake coming out. You've got the Nintendo classic, the Super Nintendo classic. People just love all these retro things. People love all this stuff going back to their youth. And when it comes to video games, on some levels, they just want a game that's, you know, simpler than some of the stuff out there and stuff they can share with their family. You know, it's one of those where... You know, I love playing games with my kids, but there's, you know, just only so many games out there that are, you know, not too complex for them to get into. Um, so it's one of those where, you know, Earthbound definitely fits into this. It was a game that was simple enough to be played by young kids, but it had enough humor that, you know, people of all ages love playing it. And I think they could continue this with, you know, a with an Earthbound for the Switch. Um, additionally, you know, if they went back with the old cartoony style graphics, that would actually, I think, look marvelously on the Switch. If they decided they wanted to switch it over to like a 3D version, I'm sure they could also pull that off quite well. Um, last reason is with the popularity of the, with the Super Nintendo Classic that has Earthbound on it and the popularity of Earthbound characters and other Smash Brothers, and there's an upcoming Smash Brothers game coming out. You know, the willingness to check out a new Earthbound game, I'm sure, would be at an all-time high. People would just, you know, eat that up with, you know, all the people who never played it, but, you know, know about it from all the other ways. In addition to the legions of countless fans who've been longing for a sequel since 1994 and, you know, didn't want to learn Japanese in order to play it, it just seems like it's a great time for that to be coming out, especially since next year will be the 25th anniversary of the U.S. release of Earthbound, and just saying that makes me feel old, but because that it makes it seem like it's just a perfect time for them to release a new Earthbound game and, you know, maybe include, you know, 25th anniversary, you know, edition that includes the, you know, Mother 1 through 3 with, you know, the English translation so people can actually have a chance to play and, you know, include that nostalgia and all that. Seems like it's just a great idea. So uh, Nintendo, uh, get to working on that and start making your Earthbound fans happy. 
All right. So I want to thank everybody for listening to this. Um, please like it, subscribe it, add comments, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, scream it from the rooftops, whatever you got to do. Just get it out there and uh, please come back and watch again.